This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace, mercy, and peace to you all in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, and welcome to worship. As we transition from arriving here to being here, let us hear the words of the psalmist, who says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. Let us prepare our hearts for the worship of Almighty God. Friends, we gather to worship the Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth. The Lord is our stronghold, and we rejoice that we can hold fast to our God. The one who created us also sustains us and is seeing us through. Let us worship our present and abundantly faithful Lord. Friends, we gather in the assurance that Christ died for us, Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in power for us, and this very moment Christ prays for us. The old life is gone and the new life has begun. So let us celebrate the good news by which we gather and by which we are saved. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As those who abide in this forgiveness, let us express the joy of God's peace. As those who have been forgiven, loved, and freed by Jesus Christ, we are called to share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. And also with you. And also with you. 
Let us be about the work of peace in the world. As we prepare ourselves to receive God's word, let us offer a prayer to open our hearts to all that God would have us hear. Let us pray. God of mercy, you promise never to break your covenant with us. In the midst of the complexity and fullness of these days, speak your eternal word to us that we may respond to your gracious promises with faithfulness, service, and love. Amen. Our scripture lesson for this morning comes to us from the entirety of Psalm 124. It is a psalm of ascent, as in ascending, as in I lift my eyes to the hills or my feet set out up on the road to Jerusalem in pilgrimage. It was pilgrimage that was believed to be the setting of this psalm. It's written from the vantage point of one who is looking back on Israel's history and remembering a time of God's deliverance. Listen now to God's word. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrents would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Here ends our reading. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our house these days has been filled with the music of the most recent Godzilla movie soundtrack. Loud, intense, unrelenting, all the time. Loud, intense, unrelenting, all the time. Our five-and-a-half-year-old five has never actually seen the movie, but he's managed to latch on to the idea of the Godzilla figure and is enthralled with this improbably huge monster laying waste to the eastern seaboard, entirely unmoved by our meager human defenses. A heavy drumbeat and shrieking string and trumpet section was blaring in our home two weeks ago when the earthquake struck. When it did, I thought to myself, in the words of our wonderful communications coordinator, David Steinbrenner, why not? It is 2020 after all. This year is starting to feel positively apocalyptic, befitting the Godzilla soundtrack. Some might call it a dumpster fire of a year. Drought and fires out west, explosions in Beirut, protesters in the streets, conspiracy theories, a bottomed out economy, a meteor the size of the Empire State Building grazing our solar system, earthquakes, an unprecedented number of forecasted hurricanes, the jostling of national and global powers. Oh yes, and there's something in the air that's trying to kill us. At this point, news of a giant monster terrorizing New York City would likely be met with little surprise. Why not? It is 2020 after all. The psalmist writes from the vantage point of one who is looking back over a time of community trial for Israel that felt similarly apocalyptic and is pressing people to praise because the Lord was on their side. Listen to those if-then clauses. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, repeat, if it had not been the Lord, then they would have swallowed us alive. Then the flood would have swept us away. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord, we have escaped. In some ways, 
the psalm begs the question, does God really choose sides? It is speaking, after all, about Israel avoiding the gnashing teeth of an enemy because of the Lord and reads like a battle hymn oriented around the assertion that God is on our side. This notion is widely prevalent and problematic, as you well know. We've heard its sentiment or some version of it at various moments in our national history. The presidential campaign season is officially upon us. I'm guessing that many Republicans and Democrats alike share in common the belief that God is on their party's side. When the U.S. has been at war, we've heard the overtones of God is on our side. We've heard it in interviews with sports stars after winning a game. One such figure once told an interviewer that when the game had gotten tough, it was just God ratcheting up the drama to make the win all the more special. Victory sure is sweet when God is on our side. Christianity has been guilty of exploiting the sentiment of this psalm over time with horrific consequences. The idea that God is on our side over and against others led to the bloody crusades of 1096 to 1271 and the advancement of what is called the doctrine of discovery, the idea that when Christians showed up in a land, they could take whatever they wished, which paved the way for imperialism and genocides in Africa and the New World. The Romanus Pontifex, written by Pope Nicholas V to the King of Portugal in 1455, is an exemplar of this doctrine, granting the king dominion over all lands and peoples they conquered in Africa. Specifically, it said that they may, quote, invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Sacrosenes, which are Arabs and Muslims, and pagans whatsoever, and other enemies of Christ wheresoever placed, and the kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, dominions, possessions, and all movable and immovable goods whatsoever held and possessed by them, and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery and to apply and appropriate to himself and his successors the kingdoms, dukedoms, counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods, and to convert them to his and their use and profit. Yes, staking a claim on God as on our side over and against others has been deeply problematic over the years. But the psalmist here isn't boasting about God choosing their side. The psalmist is looking back to a time of apocalyptic fear and saying, only because God was with us did we see it through. Commentator Scott Hosey points out that that imagery of being delivered from a violent rush of overwhelming floodwaters harkens back to the mythology of the ancient Near East. The most terrible thing Israel could face, he writes, was the chaos of the primeval waters, the very symbol of destructive evil. Israel was up against a force of evil so darkly primitive and brutally powerful that they could not possibly overcome it. But they did. And that's how they knew that Yahweh was on their side. This claim, he says, is not a blood-curdling war cry. It is the grateful whisper of the miraculously delivered. There can be no confusion in this psalm about the insufficiency of human capacity in the face of life's great trials. We don't need a Godzilla movie to tell us that all of our strength and ingenuity and defenses don't even touch the need. 
We rely on and are delivered by the covenant faithfulness of God alone. This is not about God being enlisted in the cause of some of us. This is about all of us being enlisted in God's cause as God stages a campaign of love and liberation in the world. This psalm is testifying that when we are in the grip of hopelessness, there is delivery with our God. It is testifying that when we are trapped by the powers of sin, we don't have to be afraid because God is with us. It is testifying that when we face off with apocalyptic challenges and destructive chaos and primordial evil, we can take heart and declare victory because our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Psalm 124 is not a call to war, it is a call to worship, but not a worship that lets one so delivered from sin and death sit back on their heels. Rather, a worship that calls forth a response to get up and get going. This is a pilgrim's song written to promote and encourage the people to ascend, to make the journey up to Jerusalem, and it was intended to be sung along the way. It is one of those psalms that reminds the people of who they are and whose they are as they muster the energy for the pilgrimage of faith and life. And it is one of those psalms that goads them into inhabiting the rhythms of devotion and the intentionality with regard to faithfulness necessary to be on God's side. Not because God would otherwise kick them out or strike them down or give them over to destruction. Not because their salvation is at stake but because it is easy to lose your footing on trust when the floodwaters of life rise. Because it is easy to succumb to cynicism and despair when the pilgrim journey gets long and hard. Because it is easy to shrink back and circle the wagons in your own defense when fearing the fouler snare because it is easy to go AWOL on your enlistment in God's campaign of love and liberation in the world when so many powers are trying to win you to their side. Because it is compelling to believe that the doctrine of discovery is just a thing of the past. Because it is seductive to forget that oppressive systems and policies and practices are purposefully at work and to lapse into complacent contentment while others writhe in their teeth. The psalm was written because you need a song in your heart to remind you of who you are and whose you are as you walk the pilgrim journey of faith and life when existential threats abound as they do today and things feel downright apocalyptic at times. And that song does not sound like da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Amen. Friends, the saints of old testify to us of the mighty acts of God, so that we might know and believe that the one who was faithful before shall be faithful today. So let us take those burdens that we carry that are too heavy for us and put them in the hands of the one who is happy to help and deliver. Let us pray. God of all generations, Be by our side as we long for your presence. Be by our side as we cry out and pray. Be by our side as we search the way forward. Be by our side and make us vessels of grace. Lord, be by our side in our worry and anger. Be by our side as we wait for a new day. Be by our side in our lonely isolation. Be by our side, O gentle potter. We are your clay. And Lord, where we are standing in falsehood, in that place where we resist, your kingdom come. There send your spirit to deliver. Here we are. Send us. Your will be done. Send us to the side of the weary. Hold them up by the might of your hand. Send us to the side of the despairing. God of heaven, do what only you can. Send us to the side of the hungry. Bless our lives to become daily bread. Send us to the side of the brokenhearted. Raise them up you who gives new life to the dead. Protect and provide for all those oppressed or suffering, the Uyghurs in China, detained immigrants, refugees, image bearers in prison, all those pressed down and struggling for air. Send your spirit of salvation upon us and make us the answers to our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go now this day in hope and in joy to love and serve the Lord in every single thing that you do and abide always in God's peace. Remember, we didn't leave the church. Now we go out to be the church. So as you do so, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.